So I know a lot of people are talking about this, um, but uh, you know, I, I I wanted to make sure I address it as well because there's a bunch of uh, crazy stuff it, it, that uh, went down over the course of the week. But the big thing that everybody's talking about is this COVID relief bill, and everybody's kind of celebrating the Democrats and championing Democrats uh, at the, at the fact that they got this this COVID relief bill out. Uh, you know, like four months after they said they were going to get one out. They do this like right at the edge of when unemployment is going to run out. And then they're like, oh, we'll re-up unemployment, but we'll just fuck with it, uh, <laughs> as, as you'll see later. So um, here's here's some of the changes that that they had to implement within the Senate is they restricted the eligibility for the stimulus. So I think you have to, uh, it's it's like 100K, if you make 100K, uh, or, or is it 100K or less? Or no, it's it's 80, it was 100K, and then it became 80K. Um, so now it's like 80,000 or less, you're eligible to get the stimulus. But even then, it's like maybe kind of, sort of, because it's based on tax information from, 2018 2019 so there's a lot of people that are going to go uh fall through the cracks myself included because i'm uh <laughs> I'm, I'm an entertainer that doesn't make a lot of money uh i know a bunch of people who uh who did who just fucking fell through the cracks of all of that uh you know that never got the 600 and they never got the other uh 1200 either uh, they weren't able to get any unemployment because they they were in that weird in between phase of where they were working and making enough money to like get by, but not enough money that they were able to like file taxes because they don't consider themselves to be a a, a real human being. Uh, so be on the lookout for more people to be lost in this. The forgotten people, the unseen people. You know, sex workers can't get. Uh, can't get the stimulus because it's uh, you know uncouth or whatever the fuck they want to they want to claim it is which is like fucking legalized prostitution man it'll probably solve a whole bunch of problems uh there are people too you know like anyway that's and that's a whole different uh issue there uh they dropped the unemployment to three hundred dollars a week which is half of what it was before i think they were talking about it being like 400 and then they were like well maybe we should keep it at 600 but then we'll go back to 400 and then they just landed and they were like, let's do half. Let's just let's just half the unemployment uh, un unemployment payments per week at the point where, you know, uh, most of Americans are unemployed. Uh, there's there's really not a lot of jobs out there that people can do, uh, not a lot of jobs out there that people can do safely in order to ensure that these essential workers. And that's the other thing, right? They keep calling they keep calling them essential workers, but they don't treat them like they're essential workers. So, so there was there's a there was that, uh, and then they're and then they're saying uh, ten, the first ten thousand two hundred dollars uh, wouldn't be taxed because oh boy it's just too low. Instead of saying if you make ten thousand two hundred dollars, how can we bump your numbers up? Like if you make ten thousand two hundred dollars as an individual, it's less than minimum wage, uh, and but but that is that is a reality because. If you work full time on minimum wage of seven twenty five an hour, um, you make about twelve thousand dollars a year. But if you if you don't work full time, let's say you work part time and you're getting seven twenty five an hour, then yeah, you can very easily make way less than fucking twelve k. And again, I I know I've said this before, and I'm and I'm gonna say it again, is if they really want to keep the minimum wage. At seven twenty-five an hour, at twelve thousand dollars a year, then the, all of the politicians have to have to live a year on that before they pass that. So if they want to say, okay, we're going to keep things at seven twenty-five an hour, great. Then that's what you get paid now. That's what you get paid. You get paid a maximum of twelve thousand dollars a year, uh, and anything else, you know, if you get uh, fucking gifts from lobbyists and corporations and shit, great. That's taxed at a ninety-five percent. So you really don't get any extra money. And if you can survive a year, if you can survive a year without government assistance making $12,000, then great. We'll keep the minimum wage as it is. But if you can't, guess what? Everybody gets paid what Nancy Pelosi gets paid. Buckle up.
Those are the rules. Or you could have just given us $15 an hour 10 years ago and everything would have been fine. Just just some food for thought. That's all. So part of this, so, you know, I kept thinking about like the, the reductions and all this stuff. And the the amount reductions, because it went from, oh, we should give, you know, Trump was advocating for $2,000 uh, for the for the thing and 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 then it was like all the there was a bunch of Democrats and a bunch of economists that were part of the Obama administration that came out and they were like oh well you can't do that that's crazy poor people don't know what to do with money they're gonna put it into crazy things like food and rent and not back into Wall Street to invest and grow and all this other bullshit right and then of course they had to eat their own dick whenever the GameStop stuff happened they go look this is what happens when poor people uh, invest their money into Wall Street uh, they win. And when they win, they they use that money for um, for for generous reasons uh, rather than just being, uh, you know, just bags of douches, uh, it, it just fucking over the it, it, any and everybody that they can see, because capitalism is not about cooperation. It's not it's about mm -hmm. stepping on the throat of your 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 opponents uh, to to ensure that you and only you succeed. It's a completely greed, greed driven economic system anyway. Um, but then mixed with this reduction that they're throwing out there, you also have this push to reopen schools so parents can get back to work. There's a push to say, oh, well, we're starting to vaccinate, even though the vaccinations are rolling out slower than what they anticipated. And now, you know, there there's uh, uh, competitors working with each other and they're like, oh, we're authorizing, you know, uh, the, the, the vaccine manufacturers to manufacture even more vaccines now. And, um, you know, I think this is a push to basically say, well, let's get back to normal, right? Let's get back to what pre-pandemic normal was. And even though it's not, it, we're not ready for that right now. Not enough people have been vaccinated. We haven't hit that herd immunity point. And we also don't know if the vaccine is going to last longer than a year or six months or wh whatever, you know, however long it's going to be. So we don't know if this is going to be a yearly vaccine that they're going to have to make. And if it is something that they're going to have to make yearly, then guess what? Uh, you're going to have to figure out how to reduce your insane war budgets and figure out how Wall Street, who you bailed out and basically handed out $6 trillion to, is going to be able to help pay for that shit um, every year now. So uh, what they're, I think what they're trying to do with basically cutting everything in half, giving people less than what they promised, making us wait till the very last minute until all of this stuff is um, is done is they're, they're trying to signal, well, the pandemic is coming to a close, you guys. We're, we're going to be able to go back to normal. We're going to be able to, um, you know, get back to going to concerts and eating at restaurants and participating in uh, all of the consumerist shit that we participated in before, you know, let's get back to that uh, uh, that that culture of excess within cal capitalism. You know, we're we're getting back to that. That's I think is what they're trying to signal, uh, because a lot of us uh, can't live on fourteen hundred dollars and and three hundred dollars a week, right? And if that is the case, then again, the politicians should do that first. The politicians should live on three hundred dollars a week and see if they can make it in a place like Washington, D.C. or San Francisco or Seattle or New York City or Chicago. And the list goes on and on and on. Right. And, you know, there, we're, we're talking about vaccine rollouts and such. Well, a lot of countries, a lot of like smaller third world and, and even developing countries don't have enough of the vaccine. They're not getting vaccine shipments as much as uh, it, it was promised. And the United States has got a kind of a stranglehold on vaccine production, right? There, you, you've got AstraZeneca's vaccine, you've got Johnson and Johnson's vaccine, uh, and how, but how much of those are, are flying around the world? It's far less than how much they're trying to produce uh, to to vaccinate Americans. So, and even that. A lot of Americans aren't vaccinated, right? Like they were supposed to finish vaccinating elderly people by what, early February? And we're just getting around to wrapping that up. So they're at least at minimum a month behind schedule. And the arguments can be made, you know, oh man, well, Biden had to inherit this thing from Trump and da 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 da, da. 
so he's doing the best that he can. And maybe that's true. But you also know that the last couple of years, the weather in the United States has been insane. There's been insane amounts of winter storms. You get these false springs that pop up, and then you get these crazy winters that follow again for the next couple of weeks. And then this, and then the real spring shows up for a little bit before it gets to fucking summer. You guys know the patterns of it, but both parties deny climate change is a reality. And if they if they can't deny that climate change is a reality, if they or rather if they if they do agree that climate change is a reality. And, and came up with a plan to get around that to distribute the vaccines, then every, they would run out of excuses to say, well, why aren't we doing something to help fix the climate change problem? Why aren't you divesting from fossil fuels and, and trying to, uh, you know, help sustaining energies? Why aren't you banning fracking? Uh, why aren't you doing something about uh, making electric cars more affordable? Things like that. And they don't want to answer those questions because, you know, the, the Democrats are are just as much in the pockets of the fossil fuel industries as the fucking Republicans are. Uh, so all of this, again, is is to kind of get the working class back into work, back to do what, um, you know, back to just making money for for billionaires. That's really all they want the working class to do. Uh, so this that's kind of what I think that this is signaling. That's kind of why I think. There was such an uh, such a push from, you know, the uh, the Democrats. Certain Democrats were still saying we shouldn't give two thousand dollars to the middle class when Trump was pushing for it, and Joe Biden was like, "Hey, just fucking sign whatever, get the six hundred out to Americans." Because if Trump gives two thousand dollars to Americans, then Joe Biden might have to give them even more. That the next COVID relief bill, which would have which would have probably been uh, underway around now uh, would have to be even bigger than $2,000. So again, they cut everything in half so that it makes Trump look even worse. And now Joe Biden doesn't have to do a whole lot to make himself look good. Great. He didn't drop the N-bomb. Hooray! Like, it's, it's, it's pathetic that the Democrats have the House, the Senate, and the White House, and they still couldn't pass a bill without all of the concessions that the Republicans wanted to make. And then the Republicans didn't even vote for it. Not one Republican fucking voted for this bill. So why did you, why did they have to make concessions if the bill could have passed without any Republican support? It's because they lied to us and it's because they don't actually give a shit. So let's get to some of the Democrats that are fucking making excuses. Let's get to some of these progressives that were supposed to vote as a block and push Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden further to the left, right? Uh, Pramila Jayapal. Pramila Jayapal say, uh, says, centrists don't implement good politics or good policies, but their changers, changes were minor in the long run. That's what she said. So, so she's basically saying, well, look, these centrists that are in, in office don't make good policies. They don't make... Um, you know, they, they don't make uh, they don't play with good politics. Uh, it's all very shady. And, and it is it is a game. So in some way, shape or form, she is addressing the fact that this is a game. But then she goes on to say, well, you know, as, as much as these uh, these policies are terrible and they're not good for the people in the long run, it's very minor and they don't actually affect the, the, the larger scheme of things. Uh, you know, and, and you got to ask is, is, uh, lying about $2,000 checks during probably one of the largest unemployment, uh, uh, trends that we've ever seen in the history of this country. Is that minor? Cause that's what happened. That's what happened. He lied about the $2,000 checks. It went to 1400 and then we had to wait two months to get it when people are about to be evicted. When there's fucking food lines all over the country. Is that minor? I don't know. I don't know, Ms. Jai Paul. What do you think? I kind of feel like that's a pretty fucking major thing to happen. Having the unemployment for a country that's going through food lines that can't pay their bills. Is that my is that a minor change though? That's not gonna affect Americans? And, and how they how they take care of their families, how they pay their bills, how they alleviate themselves of debt. That's not going to. What What's your solution for that? Oh, if the unemployment's not enough, maybe you should join the military because they'll pay for your shit. 
Yeah, great, because I'm sure Biden's going to fucking bomb more countries. But that's a minor thing, right? Keeping the minimum wage stagnant. Oh, that's minor. That hasn't that hasn't affected people negatively for fucking decades. 10 years, over 10 years we haven't had an increase in the minimum wage and you had an opportunity now to put that in and you and you excuse, made this bullshit excuse of all oh, well the Senate parliamentarian a a a person you've never fucking heard of until right now well they're the one to blame. Yeah, well Kamala Harris can can come in and basically give the middle finger to the Senate parliamentarian and say no, we're putting that in the fucking bill. And no Republican votes for it. Great. It doesn't matter because all of the Democrats will, which that was also not true. And we'll get to that in just a minute. That's not minor. These are all things that very majorly affect the American people. So when progressives compromise and they always compromise to the corporate Democrats and the corporate Democrats compromise to the Republicans because America, uh, American politics, it has no left wing. There is no uh, political party for the people. This is a conservatively run fucking government. All of these are major changes. They're not minor changes. What the fuck are you talking about? So if these are minor changes, why concede to them when you know that they <laughs> I, I, and I know Pramila Jaipal knows that they have major consequences to people across the country. So why are you conceding? Didn't you say you would vote as a block to push back against this sort of shit? And you fucking didn't. And you didn't. Then she goes on to say, we'll take the win. Uh, it's our job to make the bill as progressive as pos possible. So if that is the goal and, and you're trying to compromise with corporate Democrats, why not put something like a UBI in there? Why not put Medicare for all in there? Why not put rent cancellations, debt relief, get, getting rid of student debt? Why not put those things in the bill, too, and 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 frame it in a way that, uh, you know, this does help people that have been affected by COVID-19, that have been affected by this pandemic, because there, there's a massive unemployment going on in this country right now, and people can't pay their bills. I, I, I sure shit can't. I've got I've got car bills that I can't uh, I, I, I like I had to fucking fight <laughs> just farcical, ridiculous fight with the bank. Uh, over what I can and can't pay. And the woman was like, well, don't worry about the late payments. And I was like, yeah, well, what about this crazy amount of interest that's going to gather? And she's like, oh, well, we can't do that. But we also can't charge anybody uh, interest. Like, we can't make people pay interest um, if they've been affected by uh, the coronavirus, if their work is, which my work has been affected by the coronavirus. And I explained that to her and she was like, well, you don't have to pay the interest then, but the interest will still be charged. And I was like, well, how the fuck does that make any sense? So you don't you, if if the bill is supposed to be as progressive as 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 you claim it to be, Permal Jayapal, why is none of these things in there? Why are there no protections for average people that are going to be in debt and now are going to accumulate even more debt? It's because you didn't make the bill as progressive as you possibly could. Because when you did try to put UBI in there, when you did try to put Medicare for all in there, Nancy Pelosi came down and she said, oh, we can't have that in there because the Republicans might be mean to us and vote against it. So we can't put that stuff in there. Well, sure you can. You could still fight for it. What did you do? You said, oh, well, Nancy said we can't do it. So I guess I guess we'll remove it. And that was it. There's no fight in the progressives uh, in office right now. They, they cave in, and then they compromise, and who do they compromise on the behalf of? They compromise on the behalf of the corporate Dems. They don't compromise to help us out. There's never been a compromise within the structure of the United States government that has ever benefited the American people. It's always been a compromise to help the wealthy get wealthier. It's always been a compromise to help corporations just fucking do whatever the hell they want strip workers of their human rights cause catastrophic environmental damage they can do all of that sort of stuff and then they go oh well gee willikers you guys were mean to the environment well we'll slap you with a a, a ten thousand dollar fine and and say bad get take the gold star down from exxon 
Exxon got two gold stars for capitalism last month, and we're going to take one of those down. We are, that is how firm we are on the corporations. That's their, that, and then, you know, progressives go, well, at least we got this, inc- I, one of the gold stars came down. That's something, that's, that's progress. No, it's a baby step. Let's not call baby steps progress. <laughs> Let's go to Rokana. Rokana is a, a, another, pro, you know, progressive within the Democratic Party. And he claims that he's frustrated. Oh, boy, he's frustrated over the removal of the minimum wage. Uh, and he figured, well, we put it in there because all the Democrats would vote for it. Uh, and there were eight Democrats who weren't. Eight Democrats who voted against it. So, no, this whole bullshit of, oh, let's get more Democrats into into the uh, into Congress so that we can get all these things done. What did AOC say when she was shitting on forced to vote? What did she say? She was like, no, 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 we need to focus on things we can get done. We need to focus on things like passing the minimum wage to fifteen dollars an hour. And what what did it, what what happened? They dropped it from the covid relief bill. Over some nonsense, over some bullshit, and you had eight Democrats that were against it. Joe Manchin leading uh, all of them. So what's the point of us voting for Democrats if Democrats are just going to side with Republicans anyway? What's the point of that? I mean, how much more proof do we need to know, do we need to see that that there is all virtually no difference between the Republicans and the Democrats? The only difference is that the Democrats will 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 say mean things a little bit nicer wearing a rainbow flag and a Black Lives Matter pin. And quote MLK out of context. So what you know, where, where's the voting and voting as a block? Oh, we have all these progressives. We can vote as a bloc to push back against corporate Democrats. Where was that? I didn't see it. I didn't see shit. Then you had Joe Manchin from West Virginia, who's just a secret Republican. He he comes out and says, well, I'm going to block the climate infrastructure bill uh, if if Republicans don't get a 50-50 chance um, you know, uh, to, to make their changes when it comes to the Senate. I'll block it. I'll block the bill. Joe Manchin is vying for Mitch McConnell's spot. He wants to be the next uh, king of turtles. That's what Joe Manchin wants to be. All block bills. That's what I'll do. That's what McConnell did for years. And this guy wants to be the next McConnell. But he's a Democrat, right? Any blue will do. Well, this is any blue. When you put your bar that fucking low. Right. It's like people that are just like, oh, man, I'm just so desperate to get a date. I'll date anybody. And then you end up with some shitty, abusive fucking, you know, extortionist. It's like, no, 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 you don't have to set your standards that low. You are worth something as a human being. And if somebody doesn't value as such, you should leave them. And that's exactly what's happening with the Democratic Party. They don't value you as a fucking human being. So you should leave them. Stop being a part of this party. I said this, uh, I think after January 6th, I was like, if everybody unregisters themselves as a Democrat, if, if uh, let's not even say everybody, let's, for the sake of the argument, let's just say there's a million Democrats in this country. I know that's not the actual number. It's, uh, hypothetically, let's say a million, um, million Democrats because it's easy. Let's say out of those, out of those million, 700,000 Democrats unregistered from the party and join the independents or the greens or the libertarians or what have you. Don't you think that'll send a message to the party that, hey, you're fucking up? That's a very simple and easy way to do it, especially if you believe that elect- electoral politics is the way to drive change, even though, eh, not really. And and the Senate, by the way, is 50-50 now because you have people like Joe Manchin that vote like Republicans. That's why. Chuck Schumer doesn't want a majority. He's 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 the one that suggested the 50-50. Unity. 
unity to basically prove that there's one party in this country that really doesn't give a shit about the working class. All right, I'm going to look at your comments. Ha. Huh. Yeah, the, the, not much about COVID. It's, it's I think, indirectly it's about COVID, right? It's it's supposed to be more about how COVID has impacted people economically. Um, so in, in that sense, it's about COVID. But even then, it's like, if you know how, how much COVID has impacted people financially and economically, why are you not doing something? Why is the bill not reflecting that? You know? Uh Stevie saying, not surprising, almost $4 trillion in COVID relief, and we got next to nothing. Yep, yep, no $15 an hour. The kind of uh, unemployment went down from $400 to $300. Uh, and here's a quote, declare independent from the, uh, independence from the virus. We're never going to be the same. Yeah, I don't know what the whole declare independence from the virus thing is about. Um, it doesn't make any sense. I kind of feel like whatever, you know, this virus is, and it's a coronavirus, so, you know, it, it is it is meant to evolve. That's what they do. That's the behavior of the virus. So we kind of knew that the virus was going to evolve and, and we were going to see some variants and some strains, but declare independence from the virus. What does that mean? Are you like, are we going to move to a different planet? Like what's the, I mean, because that's still not going to take care of it because you, you know, the virus lives in your body. So it's like, you can't go to a different world. You're just going to infect the, the new world again. In fact, that's a terrible idea because we'd have to be in spaceships and we'd have to be like fucking in tight quarters. That's a bad idea. Uh, AOC was on Instagram basically saying, calm down, you'll get it. And she learned well. Yeah, she's she's like, what's sad about AOC is the way she's attacking like the true left, the people that she said she was going to represent. Uh, and and be a voice for is the ones that she's like attacking viciously now uh, and, and saying sh saying things like that. It's just like, you know, you you basically became Na like you were one of Nancy Pelosi's antagonizers in the very beginning. And now you're basically like her protege to become the next Nancy Pelosi, uh, which, again, Anytime progressives go into the Democratic Party, they get co-opted by the corporate Democrats. They don't stay progressives and they don't shift the shift the party any further to the left. That's the reality of it. Holly saying herd immunity is problematic. Um, in yeah, if if we don't vaccinate people and people aren't careful, um, it's problematic because there are too many people in this country that don't believe. And and I I understand some of their reservations to 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 not getting vaccinated, but I also think that it's not just my my personal view is it's not the smartest decision to make. And if we do want to get to a point um, of herd herd immunity, we are going to need to get I think like eighty percent of the population vaccinated properly. But even then, you know, we don't really have an answer whether um, you know my sister and I were talking about this is like we don't really have an answer as to whether this vaccine is going to be permanent or if we're going to need booster shots every couple of years, or if this is going to be like the flu vaccine where we're going to need to get it every single year, um, or our bodies start to learn how to cope with it. It's it's very difficult to, to say. Um, but, you know, at, at first, in the beginning of all this, I was talking about herd immunity based on some of the things I was reading and based on what Sweden was trying. And I was like, well, let's see if, they, if it works out. And Sweden basically dropped the ball uh and and you know became uh a lot worse uh because they they started getting too relaxed about it and they weren't uh um you know they they weren't they weren't being as 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 specific and and, and cautious as they were in the very beginning of it uh you're saying more more stimulus money under trump yeah we did get more stimulus money under trump uh, and the Democrats were saying, oh, we'll do even better than Trump. And they haven't. They, they, they're making us wait much longer for, for the stimulus. They lied about how much it was going to be uh, because, look, there's a lot of people there that are coming out and making apologies for the Democratic Party and saying, oh, well, you know, I always thought it was going to be 1400 because we got that 600. Well, that 600 was approved under Trump. Not just that, but Joe Biden specifically said $2,000 and he specifically said immediately after Georgia turns blue. It's been two months since that happened. And the number is 1,400. 
because of technicalities. And I said this in the beginning. I was like, watch, this administration is going to is gonna fucking hit us with technicalities, and that's how they're going to fuck people over. Aiden. Aiden says, uh, it's also it also proves that the Dems will cave to the GOP. GOP is bullshit every time. Pulling the Dems further and further to the right. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, not one Republican voted for this, and it still passed. So what the fuck were, why do the concessions have to be made? Why do the concessions have to be made if, you know, all of the Democrats are going to vote as a block and we're going to vote together? Why, the, why are the concessions being made? Because you have secret Republicans like Joe Manchin in the party and you fucking champion this mantra of any blue will do. Well, that's the any blue. Secret Republicans. That's who you voted for. This is why progressives were saying, no, 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 you can't say any blue will do. That's a really fucking bad idea. <laughs> uh, maybe call him the Mitch McConnell, the Grim Reaper. Uh, yeah, he killed that. Yeah, he was going to be the bill killer. Uh, progressive Dems don't pull Dems back to the left. They just ever, sl uh, ever so slightly slow down the full sprint to the right uh, to more of a steady jog. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they do, that that's that's a, a an excellent way to put it. Uh that's exactly what they do. It's a slow jog over to the right. Um uh, over on the Rockfins, uh Fred Fred says good luck cutting congressional salaries. I know, yeah, but it's just an idea. I do love the idea, but they ain't passing the bill to cut their own salaries. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think they'll ever cut their own salaries. Uh, they'll they'll keep giving their themselves you know pay raises and stuff. Um, Fred says the injections efficacy uh, is on the symptom is on symptom reduction, not the prevention of the infection. By definitions, by definitions, not vaccines. Oh yeah, um, I think the idea is supposed to be to stop the spread, right? The that um, uh, when you get this mRNA vaccine, it tells your body how to like build up defenses to it. That's sort of the idea. Um, and and you're and you're making a good point here. Still, experimental medicine is not proven safe or, or or effective. They were it was rushed, and that's part of you know that's part of the problem in this is. And I express this issue to my sister. Is yeah, I'm I'm a little wary as as well though I would rather be vaccinated than not, uh, you know, I'd rather be vaccinated than get, get COVID obviously, but it, but it is concerning. And another thing that concerns me is, is what happens when you uh, put science in the hands of profiteers who are trying to turn a buck off of science and forget what the mission is supposed to be. The mission is supposed to help people. It's supposed to advance society and, pro and, and move us forward uh, and that is not what profiteers give a shit about. Uh, so, you know, I, I that's why I'm like, I understand people's trepidation towards this. I understand people's concerns. And I, I wish that uh, instead of just saying it's safe, it's safe, it's safe. You, you had more people getting on air and saying, look, this is how this vaccine works. This is this is what it's supposed to do. We understand that it's experimental. We're, we're doing this to make sure that it's safe. This is you know, this is the process that we took. But there's nobody explaining that sort of stuff. Uh, partly one one part is because cor corporate media can't do that sort of stuff. Right. It, it's uh, they, they're looking for sound bites and they're looking for fun uh, hashtags and, and little catchy things they can throw up on social media to get more clicks and get more views. But again, that doesn't help people build confidence in, in science in a, in, in a vaccine that was, you know, rushed, um, and made faster. And, and now we're having distribution issues. There's a lot of concerns that people have and they're valid concerns. And it's, it's uh, like people, you know, um, I think people like us are the ones that are asking the questions and trying to find the answers when it's when I'm not really seeing a whole lot of, uh, you know, scientists and stuff coming out and, and making uh, making uh, any sort of safe statements about like, hey, this is the process and educating people. Um, until the last 48 hours, they were insisting after the injections, uh, mask wearing was still necessary. Yeah. And I think that was because they didn't have the answers. I think it's because they legitimately didn't have the answers. Um, and now now they're saying, hey, if you've been vaccinated, you know, small group gatherings are cool. 
You can go to socially distant restaurants and things of that sort, probably because they got a little bit more data about what's uh, what's going on about it. But again, <laughs> you know, when you come out and and make a statement and this will get into the next section, uh, which is Joe Biden's speech, when you come out and make a statement about. Uh, well, you got to trust us and you got to trust the science and you got to trust the CDC and do all this other stuff. Uh, but, you know, this vaccine is safe and it'll prevent you from getting this, this super deadly disease, but still wear your masks and do all the things. If they would have just come out and been like, look, we want you to keep wearing masks because, you know, we are trying to ensure that people are still going to be safe. So maybe you'll have to come back and make sure that the, that the, your body is making antibodies and make sure that you're going to be safe to go to uh, small gatherings and, you know, other people's homes and things of that sort of stuff. Um, and I understand what you're saying, Fred, like, or, or they're making this stuff as they go along. And I understand what you're saying. That is a possibility too. But you know, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. And and again, part of the issue is I wish there would have been somebody going on corporate media and they never will or, or you know, coming on shows like this or the leak camp or so on and so forth. I mean, there was a lot of people saying like cannabis is a good way to prevent COVID. Vitamin D is a good way to prevent COVID. But that wasn't part of the mainstream discussion because it was all about Operation Warp Speed. So, uh, you know, I... I, I hope that helps answer w w the the question that you were stating, because I also have those same concerns. Um, so I, I hope that kind of um, helps a little bit in that regard. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of uh, of various shows that I uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. And go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.